Hello, math friends. Today we are multiplying. Let's first take a trip back in time when we learned why we might need to multiply sometimes. When we have equal size groups and we are looking for a total, that's a good time to multiply. We also learned that if we're multiplying two numbers, it doesn't matter what order we multiply, we still get the same value. We also learned that if multiplication is our only operation, that it doesn't matter what order we do it. For instance, in this example, we can multiply 3 times 2 first, and we'll end up with 36. And if we multiply 2 times 6 first, we still end up with 36. Amazing! We also learned that when we have bigger numbers, that we could break them up. For instance, here, we could split that 12 into a 10 and a 2. Then we've created two separate products, and ultimately we'll need to add those to get to our final answer. Okay, now it's time to multiply some bigger numbers. Here, we're going to start in the ones place, multiplying the 9 and the 8, which we know is, hello, anyone? It's 72. We can't fit all of that in the ones place, so we put the 2 in the ones and carry the 7. Now, we multiply the 7 and the 8, which we know is, good job, 56. Don't forget the 7 we carried, we need to add that to our 56, which gives us 63. Again, that won't all fit, so we put the 3 in the 10s and we carry the 6. Now, what do we multiply? If you said 5 and 8, you're correct. 5 times 8 is 40. Don't forget the 6 you carried. 40 plus 6 is 46. 46 doesn't fit in the hundreds place, so we put the 6 in the hundreds and carry the 4. Lastly, we multiply 3 times 8, which is 24. Don't forget the 4 you carried. Add that in, and we're pretty much done, except for our pretty little comma. Not so bad, right? Who wants to try it with a word problem? I knew you did. Here, your wish has come true. Here we have 12 classrooms, and there's 26 students in each classroom. And we want to know how many students there are in all. So we're given the number of groups that are all the same size, and we're looking for a total. Great time to use multiplication, so let's do it. Starting in the ones place, we have 2 times 6, which is 12. We leave the 2, and we carry the 1. Now we do 1 times 6, plus the 1 we carried, so that's 7. Now we move on to the 2 of our 26, and we multiply 2 by 2, which gives us 4. But where does the 4 go? It goes under the 7. Why is that? Well, remember that our 26 is really 20 plus 6. So when we multiply 2 and 2, we're really multiplying 2 and 20 which is 40. Make sense? Okay. Lastly, we multiply our 1 and our 2, which gives us 2, and we're almost done. But I want to point something out. This looks a little bit like our last example, where the 72 is 12 times 6, and the 240 is 12 times 20. Remember, when we break the numbers apart like that, that ultimately we'll need to add our two products. So, 2 plus 0 is 2, 7 plus 4 is 11, which doesn't all fit, so we leave 1 and carry 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, how did this all start? Oh, right, we were looking for the number of students, which we did. Who wants to do one more example? I'm just kidding. We don't have to do one more example. It's the end! Yay!